You received a call from an inmate at the Department of Corrections. This call will be recorded and monitored. If you wish to block any future calls of this nature, dial 7 now. To accept this call press 5 now. To decline this call hang up. Well hello there William. Oh no, I'm I'm doing just fine, you know, just fighting the fight, living life day by day. Ah oh, yeah, yeah, I uh I do um post a few things for for a few of the incarcerated people to see if they can find somebody to talk to out here. Sometimes I have some success, but you know, it's not that easy because everything's so expensive expensive when it comes to communicating with uh, incarcerated people. Yeah, I know you would think that something that a correctional center would consider important, they would offer for free. But fortunately, you guys have some um, options there where you can actually call people and it won't cost them anything. And that definitely will help. Oh, I know. I know there's, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to get some organizations out here and stuff that will help folks. But a lot of these institutions, they just, they don't want people to uh, help loved ones, which it still boggles my mind. I really, truly don't understand why an organization that's set up to help people get back out on the streets would put so many roadblocks up. Well, yeah, the, but you know, the healing process starts from within and the folks who are reaching out and they, they want to stop this crime spree. They, uh, they're trying and we shouldn't hinder that and i know there's some restrictions and and that's definitely something we need to promote if there's if they're taking advantage of the situation or they're abusing their privileges there has to be consequences because that's a that's a lesson we can learn on the outside as well but uh to actually put so many barriers in there to make people pay for emails and pay for phone calls and uh, to put such restrictions on visiting and uh, providing um, financial assistance like gifts and cards and letters. Well, that's, that's definitely a fight we'll fight. And uh, hopefully you'll be able to win your cases and your appeals and stuff and get out and help us too. Because nothing speaks stronger than somebody who was actually in that place. I could say all that I want, but if you go to social media and you see people who are actually incarcerated or those who are formerly incarcerated, they can get some, uh, a a lot of followers and a a lot of uh, subscribers because there's, it's like listening to the story from the horse's mouth. And uh, I really encourage that. And I'm getting a few people that will, tell me stuff off the record and I'll just create a, a video that's based on that. And then there's those that uh, speak directly. You have 60 seconds remaining. <clears throat> yeah, Damar, he uh, put a video out on my on my channel and he's more or less giving advice to folks so they don't end up like him. Somebody who was just into violent crime and into... Uh, massive criminal activity and you know they, they, just to just to talk to us is comforting well you have the people uh you have 30 seconds remaining contact me they can give me a call and then uh if you send me names i'll i'll reach out to them on the email 
and we'll see if we can get him somebody out here that will talk to him. Oh yeah, yeah, I I really enjoy it. So I uh, I thank you for the call and for giving me the update, and uh, good luck on your your fight. Yeah, we don't need innocent people locked up. Okay, well I will talk to you later. And thank you for using inmate call. Goodbye. Hello, welcome to AQS Inmate Call, and I'm your host, Stroll Wilborn, and this episode is about human relationships. And it, uh, I think it's one of the simplest things to help prevent a crime. And as everybody knows from social media and from the uh, mainstream news, specials on TV and movies and you know all kinds of different outlets out there that by restricting our rights you know we feel that if they don't have as much control over uh, their own body their own education uh, rights to own weapons or certain drugs restrict all this stuff, we should cut down on crime. They don't understand that criminals aren't basing their activity on access. They're basing them on their criminal motivation. There's uh, an addiction or a challenge. They're bored and they, they're looking for something that they could do and get away with. Or they're just uh, angry. You know, there's been a lot of murders out there because of love triangles or jealousy or um, misunderstanding. And when you go to court, let's let's just say a person goes to court 100 years ago. And, you know, why did you kill the shopkeeper? And the answer, a hundred years ago, is going to be because it was easy to get a gun. It's definitely going to be something else. And we also like to think that the family is an important part of growing up. You know, somebody living in foster homes and bouncing from place to place. Somebody whose parents are not there, and so they're, they're latchkey kids. We tend to think that they'll grow up and commit crimes. And with that kind of information out there, you would think people would concentrate on that, but they don't. For some reason, human relationships are fine. And we don't need to concentrate on We need to concentrate on certain weapons. And once they get rid of that weapon, there's another weapon that comes up. And then another weapon that comes up. And pretty soon they'll be taking away forks and butter knives. Because these are used to kill folks. And when we have a simple solution where... It, one of the one of the big things that I like is, is uh, Alcoholics Anonymous. This isn't more like let's get rid of all the alcohol and then your problems will be solved. This is more like there's people that's in the same boat as you. Let's let them talk. Family members, medical personnel, law enforcement, community leaders, schools. They all get together. To try to help the person's mental state of mind relax and find alternative ways to get through a situation instead of alcohol. That's a great organization. Same thing with uh, drug addiction or any type of addiction. People who are uh, overeaters. They, they can get into an organization like that. 
I support these 100%. And there's even groups on social media that that people can just get together and discuss these things. And the uh, I've, I've spoken to a few incarcerated people who reach out, but nobody wants to talk to them because of the crime they committed or something. And I see that if a, if a group that was dedicated to mentoring and working with folks to get out and stay out, if they could go into the, the prisons and sit and meet, or if they had an organization where they could get out of the prison and and meet, you know, just strictly dedicated to formally incarcerated. I see that as being a good positive move to preventing crime. And when uh, I speak to people who are locked up, a lot of them in there are just lonely, and they they reach out to each other. Uh, so if uh, you know, if a person were to get somebody on the outside on their email contact list and the person just sends an email you know happy birthday or how are you doing today or or what's the latest on your your daughter that means a lot because it shows that somebody is treating them as a human rather than this perpetual criminal who will never change and it gives them hope you know especially if they're talking to this person and they like this person and they think when I get out, I don't want to disappoint this person. And uh, we have those in there, and, and everybody knows this, where they just they just don't really care. They've given up. They're not at that point where they can want to commit suicide, but they're willing to live. They just don't care. They don't care if they get out of prison. They don't care if they get in trouble. They don't care if they hurt anybody. They just don't care. And these folks usually just want to be left alone. And then if they do want attention, they'll, they'll grab it. So in prison, you have a better chance of just kind of subduing that. But if you got a person out there who wants to get out and wants to stay out, but there's no support, there's nobody talking to the person, there's nobody giving the, in the person any motivation to uh, get away from this criminal activity, then these folks that we lock up are going to come out in worse shape than when they went in. And prison is traumatic. And uh, that's something we cause. You know, we sit and shoot to 15 years in federal prison. That's a shocker. And then the person sitting in that prison with a bunch of folks who don't care, who will manipulate, who will abuse. And then they get out and what after that? We recognize the people that's locked up. We don't recognize the people that are considering crimes. We're, we, they're harder to identify. So if we can concentrate on the people that we know about, the people who are locked up, help them get out and talk with folks, their own family members, their friends. And these are the people that are potential criminals. If they can get through to those folks, we can prevent a few things. And that may have happened, and it may continue to happen. We really don't know. We don't know what crimes were prevented. Just the ones that were done, and if they've been repeated. And human relationships, supportive relationships, uh, positive attitude, these make a difference. They make a difference to people who are on the outside world, they make a difference to the people who are locked up. And uh, if you go to social media like YouTube and you look up former incarcerated people and watch their videos, listen to some interviews, you get a better understanding of what led them to that life. And then you can be on the lookout in your own world. 
and people that you see exhibit the same kind of traits, you can talk with them. And uh, I have this video, and it's called, This is Sky Strong. And it's about a woman who has an open communication with her son. She loves her son. She cares about his well-being. And she wants him to be open and honest with her. And it's working. And he's getting bullied instead of going out and uh, committing suicide, which a lot of folks do when they get in situations like that. He thinks, you know, my mom cares about me. I'm in a bad situation. I know she's not going to harm me or mock me or treat me any, any differently than anybody. I'm going to go to her and I'm going to let her know what's going on. And they both seek advice. And, and I put advice on there that I've received over the years that I'm hoping would help people to at least open up. And... Um, in this particular case, the mom was able to maintain her trust with her son because she was looking out for him. She wasn't looking to uh, ignore him or uh, abuse the situation. She helped him, and he felt good because he sought help, and he was able to receive help that would uh, benefit him and when situations like that come up that's not the time for the trial and error not the time to make the mistakes we need to make all those mistakes before we get into a critical situation and the best way to uh, use that to our advantage is to communicate with those who've been there and, and who've made mistakes maybe a mother who lost her daughter because uh, she wasn't um, communicating with her the way that her daughter was looking to get communicated with. And um, if she goes out and she talks to other folks, they could be on the lookout for those same signs. You know, this, this, my daughter is acting the same way as this woman's daughter did. And uh, that's what we can do to help uh, alleviate the situation. And I'm sure throughout history, families have helped folks prevent suicide, prevent criminal activity, and um, have helped build folks up. And we don't need to stop that. Let's keep that going. We never may know, but just because we don't see results doesn't mean they're not out there happening. People got to realize they're important. They matter in the world. And I'm trying to get videos out there that are just positive. They'll talk about bad situations, but how none of them are alone. And when we work with each other and listen to each other and, and lean on each other, it's not a sign of weakness. It's not something that we want to avoid. Going to a psychiatrist or sociologist, there's nothing wrong with that. And we don't need to demonize that at all. People got to feel that if, they're, if they break their ankle, they go to a medical doctor. If they poke their, their eye, you know, they go, go to an optometrist. And if they're just feeling like they want to commit a series of crimes or they're, they want to commit suicide or they want to hurt somebody, then talking to a psychiatrist is not a bad thing. And it should be, shouldn't be used against them ever. It's just another medical practice that needs to be addressed. So I hope uh, your line of communication with family and friends is open. I hope people can trust you. I hope you trust folks. And I uh, hope you just learn from the mistakes of other folks. Because mistakes are how we grow, how we become stronger. If we don't make them, we're just going to be stuck in the same rut, which could be a bad thing. And in some cases, other people's mistakes can teach us stuff. 
So if we learn from each other, we'll become better people. It just goes with territory. Thanks for tuning in. And I hope you have a wonderful day. So go out, have yourself the best time of your life. And make beautiful memories for tomorrow. Thank you.